Hey, you guys, I want to share with you some of the strategies from a few different men I've been watching in the Manosphere space, and I will link their videos in the description, and you can check out their channels if you're interested. One is a very good-looking, successful man in his 40s who has three boys with his ex-wife. She got to keep the nice house, and he's in a smaller house. And he has decided after all this time, and he has a good history with women and he can still get women, he has decided first of all after his divorce he went monk mode. I hope I got this right. He went monk mode and just decided he was just done with women. Um, and then what he was seeing out there or based on his experience, you know, his thing was women are all run through sluts, thoughts, he calls them run through sluts. They... Um, let me see if I got this right. They sling salamis, they gobble bananas, and they uh, eat DNA milkshakes. <laughs> it's kind of funny. And, and also they gain a lot of freaking weight. He talks about how 75% of people are overweight and he doesn't find overweight women attractive and that so many women cheat. And so they really have nothing to offer and that they're a huge financial expense and that when you get divorced, the expense of the woman is even harder. So there's no reason for a man to get married. And that is the experience of a lot of men. So he's Megtow. But however, he decided that he kind of missed having sex and the companionship of a woman. So he came up with a strategy with that, which I think is brilliant um, for men who are in that space of, I don't want a woman anymore. Now, this strategy will only work for men who are um, desirable as he is. It's not going to work for guys who have trouble getting women. But for men like him, he has the, called the 14-hour relationship. And he has decided, he said he was a simp in the past. And when he as simps try to do things for women, endear themselves to women, spend money on women, try to please women, and he's done with that. And his, um, his boundaries are very attractive. However, he's a little bit too guarded for me. I picked up on that, but here out the strategy. So you keep the date limited to 14 hours. You limit the time. You limit um, what you give her. You raise your expectations and you um, limit the amount of money you spend on the woman. So you pick her up at 7.30. You don't tell her where you're going. You take her somewhere. Hold on. Six. Fire engine. You pick her up at 7.30. You take her somewhere reasonable. You sit at the bar. You're not going to slide in at a booth and get all cozy. You sit at the bar next to her. She is just joining you. You don't buy her dinner. You let her have one or two drinks and an appetizer. That way, you're only spending forty to fifty dollars max. The cost of sex is forty or fifty dollars. That's it. And also, you don't want her getting all bloated and gassy and be be unable to have sex. <laughs> so maybe you let her have a third drink, but by nine thirty, you want to leave the bar and head back to your place. Your place should be clean. It should be presentable. It should be inviting. And um, you want to have a refrigerator properly stocked. Like this guy actually knows how to court a woman, okay? He's just doing it this way. Um, and you might offer her a drink or something. You go and smash three or four times or whatever you want. And then you go to sleep. In the morning, you get up at 7. Uh, did I get that right? Yeah, you get up at 7. You smash her some more. And when you're done, you as the man get up and take a shower, while you're in the shower, you tell her to go, uh, she's making the bed. Probably women usually do that. They make the bed. And then while you're in the shower, you also tell her to go downstairs, make some coffee and clean up the kitchen. So you're putting her to work and making her useful. She's not going to be like some entitled princess, right? So she does all that. He comes downstairs and if he feels like it, you know, he might make some eggs. Otherwise they have their coffee and he takes her home and she's home by 930. 14 hour relationship there's no texting in between dates um, they might do that once a week or twice a week I don't know what the situation is and that's it um, that way he's not spending money on a woman setting up expectations trying to be financial savior 
you know, getting hit up, you know, her kids need money and her kids need that and her parents have this problem and can you go visit my parents for Thanksgiving, you know, because he's like, I've got my life, I've got my kids, I don't want to take on a woman's problems or financial responsibility and I totally get him. And I think it's really good for us as women to hear men like this because he's saying what he really wants from a woman. It's just a successful man, attractive, well-dressed man. I think he's a real estate agent and he pre-qualifies women the same way he pre-qualifies a buyer for a house. Um, if a woman just wants to spend time with him, he'll say, yeah, let's, I'll meet you here. Uh, you pay your own way. Um, and that is, he, he qualifies her if she has her own money to bring to the table. If he picks her up and she's, at, she's five minutes late, he leaves. You know, don't make me wait for you. Be an equal participant. Have something to offer. Have something to bring to the table. What does this man want? He wants someone agreeable, fun, enjoyable, that likes to have sex with him, that likes to do a little bit of homemaker stuff and um, doesn't cause a lot of um, emotional burden to him. That's because he already has his kids and he has a full life and he doesn't have a lot of energy for a woman and he doesn't want to be taken advantage of. So he has some really good boundaries and I think that's really good for him. That's my opinion because I guess in the past he says he was a simp. He spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on women and where did that get him? And I applaud his boundaries. I think they're really good. Now, on the other hand, um, that's one strategy, you know, it's like, I'm going to have really good boundaries. I'm not going to get taken off my game. I'm going to stay focused on my work. Now, on the other thing, I want to also link a video by a gentleman named Kevin Weiss. Uh, he's a coach and, um, his history, he's a little bit, he's an, a very effeminate man, too effeminate for me, actually, very feminine man, but he's not gay. I thought he was gay, but he's not. He was married twice and to narcissistic women, I think, and his, he, the, the realtor doesn't offer any coaching or email or anything. He's just making videos to help other men. Kevin Wise is a coach. He's written a book. I just ordered it. He really recommends the codependency books by Pia Melody. And he attributes his failed relationships to some inner trauma that he was reliving. His whole thing is about how to heal ourselves through inner child work. He says that we're either love dependent or love addicted, love avoidant or love dependent, and or we can swing back and forth depending on whether as children we didn't get enough love, we were abandoned, or we had enmeshment from our parents. So enmeshed people will be love avoidant and um, people who were abandoned will be love um, addicts, easily get too easily attached. And that once we heal that in ourselves, we can make healthier choices and that he as a love addict would go for, oh no, he was unavailable. And so he would attract other women who were also unavailable because they liked that he wasn't all clingy. But as soon as he got into a relationship with these women, he would become really clingy and then they just couldn't stand it or something like that. Now, it's just so interesting how different people have different strategies. Different men have different strategies of dealing with women. You know, you can just have like all these boundaries. I don't want a woman or you can do all this inner work. I'm not saying that the realtor didn't do therapy. I really don't know. But, um, and he has his kids, you know, he has his hands full. But if somebody has been hurt in a relationship and wants another relationship, I'm just here to say that there are strategies for saying, um, I was attracted to women who hurt me, abused me, neglected me. And that's kind of what I was looking at with my divorce. You know, I was attracted to someone who was emotionally completely unavailable to me. And why did I pick that person? What do I have to shift in myself? So that's certainly one way to go about it. And then also just to put another whole layer around it, those of us who like to have sex, how do we go around having sex as single people? Um, you know, at the same time, I don't know how, you know, this guy has the 14 hour relationship. I don't know how many women he has to go through. 
I don't know if you can just keep one woman and, uh, and keep her from getting emotionally attached to him unless he picks a woman who is emotionally shut off. I don't know how a central woman like myself could just have sex with the guy and be okay with that's all it is and it will never be more and not get attached. I think these women, this is just my opinion, I'm just throwing ideas out there, I could be wrong. They either have to be um, emotionally disconnected so that they make it just physical or, um, and then they're just doing it for validation or fun or something, or they will get attached and then try to minimize their feelings. I just don't see how, I just have trouble seeing how women can, um, you know, I just have difficulty relating to women who can just go around sleeping around. Now, after my divorce, I did a lot of sleeping around, but I, that's because I, I never thought that these guys would just ghost me. I would have been happy just having one guy I was exploring with, but they kept ghosting me. So in my case, my high body count came about a lot because men were just using me for sex. And I didn't know that that's what they would do. But I guess it's the same way as men using women for money, uh, women using men for money. I don't know. But I was also exploring my sexuality because, um, and that goes to the high body count thing. There are men who have a problem with the high body count. But I don't know why, because the hole lasts longer than the pole. <laughs> Thank you, Tranquility. Uh, the vagina is a muscle. I had a guy the other day. Oh my God, his cock was so huge. It was like 10 times the size of my vagina. It took me so long to get stretched out enough to like take it all. And I put it on my just, I'm putting it on my just for fans on Wednesday. We have like a almost 15 minute long video. It's so good. He was so sweet to me, this young military guy, black guy. But the point being that um, my my vagina is super tight. I have a high body count, but it's not this loosey goosey thing. I have no STDs. It's super tight. It's, it's a muscle. It's a muscle like my arms are a muscle, you know, whereas a guy's penis, oh my God, there's so many limp ones, guys struggling with their erections, having trouble with their erections. Um, so I think men should be more worried about their erections than a woman's pussy. And also when they go about this high body count and run through, you know, what do you think a vagina is like a thing that just wears out? It doesn't wear out. And if a woman uses a condom, there's no DNA dumpster. There's no DNA in there. There's no DNA in, in there except my own. So, you know, the other thing I want to say too about dating is that dating has really changed. And the reason a lot of women end up with the high body count is because Men are just having sex and leaving, even if that's not what we expect or want. But, you know, it's the idea of, okay, I'm going to try again, or I like sex. And the world has really changed. This is 2022. And that's why I really like making these videos, because I want to explore who should be paying and how should sex be happening? And what kind of judgments and feelings do we want about it? Who should be paying? Uh, you know, if I don't have sex with you, I'm a prude. But if I have sex with you, I'm just raising my body count. It's like a woman can't win. And a man can be like, I'm not going to pay for you. And then he seems all guarded or he's going to be generous and nice. He could be a simp. You know, the rules that we had have just gone out the window. And women make their own money now. And divorce court is not favorable to men. And a lot of men feel used for their money. And often I think that they are because if I as a woman am only going to go out with a guy because he's paying for me, am I really, what am I really expecting from that guy? Is he supposed to like save me from having to work? And to how much should a woman work and still be in her feminine energy, you know, especially if she has children? This is why I think my job is so perfect for me because I can stay feminine and in fact, I have to be feminine to do well at my job. And, you know, um, being an escort, being a sex worker has been a great way for me to, I don't hook up. So I'm not out there trying to bring guys home. Um, I still get to have contact with men, 
but men who appreciate me. They're not just spending a $40 appetizer and trying to get me drunk. They're actually being with me sober and paying a lot more than that. And um, we get some intimacy and connection and I get to be feminine. So to me, this has been the way that I've navigated it, okay? Now the realtor with the 14 hour relationship has found his way to navigate it. Kenny Wise has found his way to navigate it. And so, you know, I think it's really fun time for us each to kind of like get really creative about how do I want to navigate this dating world where the rules are thrown out, where, you know, how we use and see sex and money, uh, men paying, women paying, when we should have sex, this is all shifting and changing. And I think we get to define it for ourselves. I think we get to define it for ourselves. For all you men looking for a woman with a low body count, you've got to nail that woman down before she's 20. Because the only way to keep have a woman with a body count less than five is you have to get a religious virgin uh, or you have to get her before she's 20. Otherwise, you have to grow up too, men, that women are being sexually active and they're going to have a higher body count than you because it's easier for them to get sex. Um, you might have a higher simping body count. You might have gone, had more failed attempts at getting women. You also had attempts, you know, you have failed attempts at spending money on women. And the woman you're dating can't be bitter at all the money you spend trying to chase these other women that you couldn't get. We all have to grow up. We can't live in this fairy tale anymore of, you know, the provider marrying the virgin. We all have to grow the fuck up. Now, what I think is really important is who are you today? How are you conducting yourself today? What are you bringing to the table? And the idea that a woman, all a woman has to bring to the table is her beauty and her, her peace leave, as the realtor calls it, the peace leave. Every woman has a peace leave. That does not make you unique. You, even if you're fit, you know, like I'm fit, I have a peace leave. Um, that isn't enough to get a really high quality man. Like what else am I going to do? Am I going to keep a clean house? Am I going to watch after his kids? Am I going to make dinner for him? Am I going to be happy when he comes home? Am I going to be easy going or emotionally demanding? How am I going to handle my finances? Um, is he going to be financially better off because of me or worse off because of me? What am I contributing? You know, I think those are some questions that we as women have to really ask ourselves. Because men have been talking for a long time about how to make themselves more appealing to women. But we women have to do that too. And it's not just our looks. What about what we do with our lives, how we show up, what's important to us, and where we spend our energy. And ideally, we're reading books, playing instruments, um, have a social life, have friends. You know, and I think basically just be happy. But then again, if a woman just has that, you know, a guy who wants a woman to work isn't going to be satisfied with that either. So then it just kind of depends. If you're a woman who wants to be a stay-at-home mom, then I think you have to really nurture those qualities that make you attractive as a homemaker. Like, are you weaving or knitting or spinning yarn or teaching children or a hairdresser, like in a very feminine, soft thing? Do you like to cook for your man and keep a clean house and pick up his laundry, really nurture a man? Or are you more like a career woman where you're each doing 50-50 for the housework and the partnership and the business and you're bringing money to the table when you as the woman bring money to the table, the man has to help with the cooking and the housework and everything. He can't have a woman waiting on him. The only way a man can ask a woman to wait on him and do all this cooking for him and cleaning and ironing is if he's the provider. So I'm just really curious, you know, uh, about how people are looking at relationships and dating these days because the options are endless. You know, we have poly people and open relationship people and MGTOW people and hookup culture and pickup artists. And then we also have people that are taking dating classes and relationship classes and they're still getting married and they still have 
faith in, you know, a relationship that can be happy. And I think some people do naturally find someone, some people who are pretty healthy emotionally and they find someone else that way can have a pretty good relationship. Um, but other ones are just really toxic, like Will and Jada Smith. I mean, they've been married 25 years, but is that something to brag about? I don't think so. It's 25 years of dysfunction. So there you have it. Some people are just willing to put up with a lot of dysfunction. So I don't think, you know, people talk about my grandparents were married 50 years. Okay, is that good? Were they happy? You know, my ex-husband's parents were married 50 years, but they're very dysfunctional. You know, when they get mad at you, they don't talk about anything. They just give you the silent treatment and ignore you over the littlest things. But they were married 50 years. I mean, was that good? I don't know. I find them very difficult to be around. So, uh, I don't, I'm not impressed by people saying their relationship lasted 50 years. To me, it meant that you put up with a lot of bullshit. You were afraid to leave. You couldn't afford to leave. And you probably were in a rut most of your life. You know, I think changing relationships really gives people a lot of freedom. And I will tell you this, I am a lot more free now than I was when I was married. I no longer, I never feel trapped anymore. When I was married, I felt trapped. A lot of the time I felt trapped because I had to consider him for everything as a good wife does in terms of what I could do or what I could say, how I could spend my money, um, you know, where we lived. You know, I let him pick all the houses. I didn't like any of the houses. I hated the houses. Um, you know, he hated going out to eat. I love going out to eat. We didn't like the same foods. We disagreed a lot on how to raise the kids or how to spend the money. And now I don't have to uh, upset anyone. No one's resentful at me. And I actually have better sex with my clients than I did with my husband because they actually like to kiss me. They're actually not emotionally shut off. I don't attract emotionally shut off men anymore. Do I have any dating options? I don't, but you know what? I think I'm better off without it. So that's how I've made peace with the whole thing. I get to enjoy the company of really wonderful, high quality men for short periods of time. And I am saying, I admire these men. I look up to these men. So I, that's how, I, how I've done it. And then I like making these videos, you know, I think those are super fun. So um, anyway, um, Oh, I should show you guys my dress. So I've been buying all these like 50s dresses. <laughs> yeah, I think it's super cute. And then I wear them with flat shoes. Let me show you my shoes. These are so cute. Uh, they were kind of expensive, as you can see from the brand. But they're, they're handmade in Italy, and they're so comfortable. I was wearing them yesterday. I went to this rally in L.A. Um, I'll put a video about it on my Rumble. And um, they're so comfortable. And see, the, they're more comfortable than Birkenstocks or any kind of thongs because it's the quality of the material. So they can be really thin, and they're so soft. It's like walking barefoot but on a cushion. And because they're flat, they're really good for the feet. Um, I have a new trainer, and he recommended to me that I get the Zero Shoes, X-E-R-O, and they're also no-rise shoes, like barefoot-feeling shoes. Um, maybe I'll make a video about that soon, but anyway. So, yeah, I'm not going to wear the dress and heels. I remember I told you guys I was going to start wearing dresses, so I went to the grocery store the other day wearing this other dress, this long green dress flapper type of dress with these shoes and um yeah a lot of men were like checking me out and women are always like oh my god I love your dress and I started noticing that most women are wearing leggings or shorts or pants it's really rare to see a woman in a dress anymore so ladies if you go to wearing dresses you know wear something modest and long and you don't have to wear heels 
I refuse to wear heels. They're not good for my feet. And because I'm into fitness, I'm really, foot health is super important. I've been working on a lot of things around my feet. And so um, these flat shoes are really good for the feet. So being, wearing a dress should be more comfortable. And it is because when I'm walking, like the breeze just blows through and there's a lot of air on my legs. Whereas in leggings, there is no air. So I get a lot warmer in leggings or pants than I do in these dresses because the wind just blows through. It's like with guys in their shorts, they wear like these surfer long surfer shorts. The wind can blow up to the shorts, you know. And then my feet are comfortable so I can walk and in the heat, um, it's just better. I, I just really wanted to recommend it to any of you ladies who are thinking about wearing dresses. Um, and this dress is pretty loose. It's not tight anywhere, you know, it's white, but it has a lining. So it's not see-through and it's modest. It has adjustable straps and this dress was under $100. Uh, I bought it at uniquevintage.com. Anyway, I um, hope you guys like this video. Please leave your comments. I always like hearing back from you guys what you have to share about your own experiences and so on. And thank you for watching my video.